next guest has been a powerful force of the Los Angeles critic circle. He has been the film editor and book editor for the Los Angeles Times, Charles Chaplin, and now he is going to be, uh, I guess, what, promoting the uh, Playboy oh, Jazz Festival? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm just, I tell you what, about the Playboy Jazz Festival has become a great event here in Los Angeles. I have a fun-filled T-shirt for you here, which it looks black from this point of view, but there it is, and I welcome you to oh. it. But actually, my I'm peripheral to that because uh, down at the music department at USC, I'm going to uh, do a panel nice on the history of jazz in Los Angeles Thank with you. some... Uh, groovy types down there and because LA is not thought of as a jazz center you know you think about New Orleans and Chicago and Kansas City the Mound City blues blowers and that kind of stuff but Los Angeles has a history in jazz going way back Bessie Smith used to sing here uh, Jolly Roll Morton died here spent his last years in Los Angeles and a lot of really good jazz types have come out of Los Angeles Buddy Collette a wonderful flute and reed player he's going to be on my panel down there and Gerald Wilson the band leader who used to play reed with Duke Ellington all those years and so on and Jenny, I guess Jimmy Lunsford he was with before that anyway there's a lot of jazz to talk about in the history of Los Angeles so we're going to have a little fun but actually my role these days is I'm the critic at large down at the paper so I can reveal my ignorance on almost any area that you'd care to talk about you know <laughs> but uh, I, uh, I I you know, write about movies, and uh, uh, this is kind of an interesting time. The summer starting, the summer movies, and we were told you got tired of uh, tired of doing film. And yeah, I, at the end of 1980, I thought that I had said everything I had to say about the movies, and they had evidently run out of things to say to me. I guess so. I switched over to books, and I've been doing books. Uh, for the last you know, three years, I guess, something like that, enjoying that. The only trouble with being a book critic, it, it interferes with your reading somewhat. You don't get to read all those things that you'd really like to read. That's, though. yeah. I mean, do you <clears> have <throat> to really, because, you know, we interview authors here, and yeah. God, we would love to sit down and read every single book. We'll be yeah. honest, we don't. We yeah, can't, you, can. you can't do it. Sure. Uh, unless you're a speed reader. Yeah. Are you a speed I read reader? fast, but I'm not a professional speed reader in the sense that I can, I don't like that. Uh, in fact, I enjoy reading. I hate to read too fast because I like to savor the savor the stuff. But uh, I, I don't know. I I, uh, I have about th seven or eight feet worth of books that I have set aside that I'm going to read on some l unlimited summer vacation, I guess, when I don't have anything else to do. Uh, I read a lot of mysteries, and, and I can't really review all those. What do you do when you pick up a book that you're going to review, and it just is so bad you can't get through 20 pages? Do you quit, and then that's where the review comes from? Uh, no, no. Uh, that happens once in a while. I just... I just put it aside, either give it back in for somebody else to review who may be more sympathetic to it. But generally speaking, you can see enough of a book and get an idea that you're going to like it going in. I, it seems a terrible waste of time and energy to re read a whole book that you hate from the beginning. It just seems useless. So I, uh, I abandon them, chances are, before I even start to read them. I, I skim through them, something like that, read the dust jacket copy and all that business. But anyway, it's critically large. I... You know, I get to mess around with jazz. I don't know if you're a, a jazz fan, but I've had... I like it, but I'm not really, i got to be honest, I do not Really? For rock and roll and country and western and that, I could get into uh, it. Well, I love that. I grew up on western New York State, a tiny town, and we had country western coming in our ears. You know, those early morning radio programs sponsored by Peruna and Color Back Shampoo and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> it was wonderful. And uh, uh, rock and roll, of course, that was... Uh, Came, came later, but I remember when I was 16, I went to hear Bunny Berg and a great trumpet player. I can't get started. You remember that? It's just a great theme song. Uh, he gave a little concert in a town called Hornell, New York, just a couple of months before he died. He died very young in his early 30s. And uh, from that moment on, I was just... Was he so jazz? I thought he was big band. Well, he was big band, but he was a great jazz trumpet player, sure. I and mean, he's he exists now in sort of eight-bar breaks and some of the Dorsey records, Marie and some of the it's others. It's a great name, Bunny Berrigan. I remember I was on, I worked at a big band radio station yeah. and uh, yeah. played Bunny Berrigan records. Uh, he and just a heck of a time trying to figure out that the owner of the station used to call and yell because I didn't play the right. And yeah. I finally told him, I said, look, you come down here and play the records. I said, Did he not like Bunny Berrigan? I mean, no, he, liked, he just would say, well, you can't play that one next to that one. <laughs> I said, well, I don't know who these people are, you know. But it's very funny, isn't it? That big band thing has come back into radio now. Mm -hmm. I mean, the music of your life, so Call of these stations. It's one of the biggest formats around. Absolutely right, yeah. And there used to, here in Los Angeles, there was a wonderful little funky station that's been around for years, KGRB, and they just play those old records, and they sound like the old records. They're so full of scratch, you know, yeah. that there's <laughs> no, you have the feeling that sitting around at somebody's table full of dust and so yeah. on. And so I had forth. a very good friend of mine who was a disc jockey on a big band station yeah. and knew all the history and used to just love to listen to him talk about 
people that, you know, just, just things you never even knew about. Yeah. Well, I'm a failed cornet player. After Berrigan, I decided I would learn to play the trumpet of the cornet. I never got to be worth a hoot on the darn thing. But I just had a particular affection for trumpet players. And one of the great thrills of my life was that Louis Armstrong was out here in Los Angeles recording a few bars as background for a movie. Just about eight bars of I Got Rhythm, and I got to meet him, and we discussed using witch hazel on your chops to keep your lips in shape and all that kind of stuff. God. One of the great kicks of my life. Yeah, you know? there many people like that. And, uh, you know, this, this Playboy Jazz Festival is at the Hollywood Bowl here in Los Angeles. And it's going to be when? I, I'm sorry, I don't even know the exact dates later in this month in June. And uh, But it's a great setting for it out there. And they get all of the great guys from, mm -hmm. from jazz. Oh, I know, it's, it's real popular. popular. It's, a heck of a, it's a heck of an event. But I think jazz gets to you and uh, you can't get it out of your system. I like all kinds of music. I love chamber music and so on. You have to come back and talk to us. We have more time. Okay. Okay. Nice to talk Thank to you. Thank you, Charles. Right. Our guest tomorrow, Perry King, who's starring in Showtime's Hasty Heart, Earl Mendel, author of The Vitamin Bible. We're also going to talk to the author of The Road to Terror, which is the life of Vivian Lee and a very beautiful lady, Annette O'Toole, who's starring in the upcoming Superman 3. So we hope we'll see. And I'll wear the t-shirt. There's the t-shirt. <laughs>